Okay, in this lecture, we'll cover how to select studies to include in your review, and we'll cover how to systematically identify which studies meet your criteria in an unbiased way. And this is what we're gonna cover. First, we're gonna talk a little bit more about something I introduced very briefly at the end of the last lecture, the Prisma flow diagram. And then I'm gonna show you how to select studies in just seven steps. Uh, step one, we're gonna gather all the records. Step two, remove duplicates. Step three, we're gonna remove ineligible records. And then we're gonna search for similar or related articles. And you're gonna actually retrieve the full text copies of the articles. You're gonna screen the full text. And at the end of the day, we want to decide on a final number and arrive at a final list of records that we want to include in a synthesis. So the main learning outcomes primarily is to know how to use a Prisma flow diagram to record and report your search and to recognize and implement the key features of the study selection process. Let's start off from the big, very beginning here. Let's talk about the Prisma flow diagram. So after you have all of the search results in your reference manager, as you should, you need to work out which studies meet your pre-specified eligibility criteria to be included in your review. And you should do this systematically and of course without bias. Now throughout the whole selection process, you should keep careful records about the studies that you exclude from your review because you need to ultimately give a summary of the total number of records identified in each stage of your search. You need to identify the number of studies that you're excluding at each stage of the screening process. You need to provide a reason for any articles that you exclude, especially when you're assessing the full text versions. Now, a lot of this information is presented in the Prisma flow diagram, which we're gonna cover now. Okay, so at the very top, we can see the top left right here, we can see the, the space to identify the records identified through the initial database search. So we're already there. and Going through our example from last time, I think we had something like 1,022 records here. And over here, records identified through other sources. Well, you should have gone back and searched the gray literature. We're gonna search some other sources you know, related to similar articles that can go back and fill this area. But you might have found some articles here uh, in, in your gray literature search. And in that case, you'd put them up here as well. The next thing is, you know, after you have all of these references in your reference manager that you're bound to have duplicates and so the next thing to do is to identify the number of duplicates that are there and then remove those and you need to identify the number of duplicates and after that you're going to have a number of records that you're going to screen just the title and abstract uh, and based upon just the in initial screening you're going to exclude a certain number of those and based upon those that initial screening you're going to find that there are a number of what appear to be relevant articles that you're gonna to wanna to get the full text versions of, and you're gonna assess those for eligibility. And then of course, after you assess those for eligibility, you're gonna end up excluding most probably a lot of those, and you're gonna have a reason for that because you have to have the reason because they initially looked appropriate up here. And obviously you write the reason down here, uh, and I'll show you an example of of this in a Costello paper. But ultimately what you're left with here is a series of full text that you've screened that look good. And you're gonna be including these in your qualitative synthesis. And so you're gonna be pulling information out of those studies. And some of those studies are gonna be appropriate to ultimately lump together in a quantitative synthesis. And that's the meta-analysis. So as promised, just to give you an idea of what this really looks like in the real world, let's have a look at that Costello paper. So here it is, whole body cryotherapy. We've been working through this and we wanna move down uh, to the, uh, the methods section. And we wanna look for their Prisma diagram because this is standard in Cochrane reviews and it's standard in many different types of reviews as, um, as, as well. So it's in the, the results section here shown as figure two. And so first you can see the number of records identified through database searching, and they're identifying the databases that, that, that they searched. So some look familiar, Central, Medline, we don't have Embase, Synol, we didn't look at, but you see how broad they get. They look at pretty much everything. And they found 1,696 records here, and they had 52 additional records identified through other sources, potentially gray literature searches. And so ultimately here they have, um, after they had initial screening, they removed duplicates. 
uh, and they, uh, after their initial screening, they removed a good number here. And we can continue on down here. They had 29 articles that were assessed for eligibility, and these are the ones that were excluded. And note that there's reasons given here. And you can see here, they had four studies published in about six articles, it says here, that were included in their qualitative analysis. And it looks like all of these studies were reasonably similar, so they were able to include them in their quantitative synthesis, that's their meta-analysis. So I hope this gives you an idea of what the, uh, what the PRISMA diagram is for and how useful it is, just a, a little overview of what a research group did when they were conducting their systematic review. Let's go back over to the deck. I think maybe we should do a little knowledge check here. Okay, so let's read the following excerpt from a fictitious review and then answer the questions below. Okay, so our search, it says, yielded 8,120 records, out of which 8,012 were found through database searching and 108 through other sources. After the duplicates were removed, 6,143 records were screened and 6,002 records were excluded based upon their titles and abstracts alone. After checking the full texts, 121 records were excluded. 16 studies reported in 20 separate publications were included in the review, out of which 10 were included in the quantitative synthesis, that's the meta-analysis. So, the first question is, what is the number of records checked in full text? Go ahead and pause the video now and, and see if you can come up with that answer. Okay, so I'm going to give my answer here. The number of records checked in full text was 141. This is 6,143. That's the number of records after duplicates were removed minus 6,002. That's the number of records excluded based upon their titles and abstracts. So were you able to get that answer? I hope so. Uh, next question. What is the number of studies included in the qualitative synthesis of the review? So again, go ahead and pause the video now, see if you can answer this question. Notice I said qualitative. Okay, well my answer, the number of studies included in the qualitative, what's also called a narrative synthesis, is the same as the number included in the review. Then this example, it's 16. Okay, let's start applying some of these steps in our own literature review. So in particular, I'm going to talk about seven different steps that we can uh, deploy in order to complete this next assignment and really this whole phase. So these steps are shown here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to gather all of our records, then we're going to remove duplicates, then we're going to remove ineligible records, and then we're going to search for similar or related articles. Then we're going to retrieve the full text. After that, we're going to screen the full text, and then you're going to decide on a final list of records. So this phase of the lecture it's really more of a workshop. And what I recommend you do is you open up your assignment. So let me just go ahead and uh, show you what that looks like. Right here. And we're going to go and we're going to fill this out as we go. So you can see the assignment instructions for assignment number four. Apply the seven steps for selecting, as described in the lecture, your review question. Step one, gather all unique records. And we're going to go through that. Then you can see step two, step three, step four, step five, and step six. And then step seven down here. And then there's a Prisma flow diagram that we're going to update uh, as we go. So again, open that assignment and uh, let's start going through it. Okay, let's start with step one. Now, a typical selection process begins with your search results. This is what we did in the last lecture. Now, the majority of these results will be in the form of titles and abstracts retrieved from your electronic databases. Uh, and so, just so we're on the, pa the same page, why don't we go ahead and bring up Zotero? Okay, so you can see where we left off. These are the articles from our central search, 182. Here's from our Medline. EBSCO host search 525 and then here's our, our PubMed search. If we go over to my library then we can see everything 1022 results here. And so the first thing that we need to do for step one it's pretty much already done. We just need to go over to our, our assignment document, our packet and for step one we've gathered all of our unique records 1022 and we also want to go down 
here, and we, again, we did this in the last assignment, but we'll just update it in this assignment too. 1022, we want to put in the top left-hand box in the Prisma flow diagram at the end of this assignment, records identified through database searches. Now you also want to include the number here that you found through other sources as well, so uh, fill that in as well. If you found other sources, uh, you can simply type another sentence here and it would say state the number of records you identified through other sources and then you can put the number here just like that. Okay, but I'm going to keep this simple and let's go back to the, the PowerPoint and let's look at the next step. Step two, removing all duplicates. So as I said, a typical search includes many different databases and because a study can be listed in each database, you're probably going to get duplicates. So the first step is removing those duplicates. So let's go back over to Zotero. Okay, so this is where certain reference managers are better than others and Zotero is pretty good at this. All you need to do is click on duplicate items right here and you can see all of the duplicates across uh, all of our databases in our main library are brought together. And so all we need to do here is we need to click on them and merge them. So you see you can just click on the item and then click merge. And then next one, merge. And so you see the process. This is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to go through it and I'll time lapse it for you just to save a little bit of time. Okay, so let's go click back over to my library and you can see now we have 848 items. The thing to understand here is that Zotero doesn't do the best job of finding all the duplicates, especially when they've been imported from Cochrane because the way that we imported them was using Zotero Connect and it was just a screenshot. And so what you need to do now is you need to go through them manually and you need to look to make sure that there's no duplicates. And this is going to take a little bit of time for me and it's going to take a little bit of time for you. But let me give you an example here. So you can search by the, the last name, see if there's anything that's uh, similar. And so here's a good example of a duplicate. And so what you need to do is just right click on it and then click move to trash. I find it pretty useful to sort it by title. And in that case, you might be able to more easily see where two titles match up. So here, for example, we can see two different references the same article one is from the Cochrane library go ahead, just delete one of them okay so that's useful to go through sort of by title but there's other ways that you can sort this information as well Sometimes it's useful also to sort it by creator and then just have another quick look. Okay, so I think after two uh, times going through that in different angles, sorting it in different ways, I think we can be pretty confident that uh, I got most of the duplicates there. So what does this mean now? Let's go back over to uh, my library. We'll click out of it maybe and then click back in it. So now we have 696 articles remaining. So uh, we started with a total of 1022 and now we have 696. That means that we removed uh, 326. So let's go back over to our Prisma diagram and let's see if we can update this. 326, let's go back down here to the Prisma diagram. Duplicates removed, 396, or sorry, 326. Now, we also want to make another space here. Retracted articles removed, and let's say that is n equals 1 because we want to remove that one too. And let's go back and make a note of this up here.
So state the number of retracted articles you removed. We'll say one. And let's go back over to uh, Zotero. No, there it is. So this work has been retracted. So we want to remove that one. And so that brings us down to 695. So let's go back to our assignment. So the number of articles that we're going to review in terms of titles and abstracts is going to be 695. Okay, so let's go back over to the PowerPoint presentation. And we want to move on to step three, which is all about removing any records that are clearly ineligible. Selecting which studies to include or exclude from your review, it's probably the most important decision that you'll make because it can change the magnitude of effect or even the overall significance of a meta-analysis. And you really need to make sure that you're minimizing bias in this process. And one really great way to do this is to have pre-specified inclusion criteria. Now, in this case, each study that you identify through your search should be carefully compared against these inclusion criteria, and it must meet all of the inclusion criteria to be included in your review. And so this is why you need to have clear pre-specified criteria from your protocol, and it, that can help you make these decisions as fairly as possible in an unbiased way. And if you recall, we used the PICOS elements for defining eligibility criteria in a previous lecture. Now, having a written summary or checklist with these criteria listed out when you're screening article titles and abstracts and later on, you know, that's going to be pretty handy. And you can have it on a piece of paper next to you or maybe electronically in a Word document or a spreadsheet or whatever works for, for you. But as soon as you find a study that fails to meet one of those criteria, then you can exclude it from your review and it doesn't need any more consideration after that. It's gone. Now, as an example, uh, if we're talking about you know, uh, the example of a review looking at the influence of so, uh, silicon holographic wristbands on physical performance, you know, then our inclusion criteria would be the type of population, the P and PICO would be all adults. For the type of intervention or comparison, it would be silicon, silicon holographic wristbands compared to a placebo or nothing at all. And in terms of the type of outcome measures, well, the primary outcome measure would be balance, and maybe we'd have a secondary outcome measure, which might be any measure of physical performance or uh, also any adverse effects would be measured as well. And in terms of the timing of the assessment, well, those would have to be measured while someone is wearing a wristband. And in terms of study designs, we know that we're looking for RCTs or quasi-RCTs. Now, before we get too far into this, I just want to show you a little uh, video clip from, from the Cochrane group uh, that deals with some important considerations during this time. So let's go ahead and watch. When we do a systematic review, each stage is done in duplicate. At least two people will read through papers to decide which ones should be included or excluded. Again, two people will do the data extraction. Um, analysis is usually a combined effort as well. Um, and the reason for that is, is to, to make, make sure that one person isn't um, missing things or approaching it from a biased point of view. It's just kind of one of the rules of, of systematic review is that you, you don't do it on your own. Okay, so now we're going to dig into an example of actually how to do this. And remember, it's important to be inclusive at this stage and to give records the benefit of the doubt as abstracts and titles. Really, they may only provide limited information, so you want to make sure that you're including a little bit more. Now, you might actually be surprised, actually, what you learn after you have a full text. Something that might not have looked appropriate when you just scan the title might actually turn out to be very appropriate. So again, you know, err on the side of caution. Obviously, irrelevant records or records that clearly don't meet your eligibility criteria can be removed at this stage, and that's really what we're trying to do, is just look for those ones that are clearly ineligible. Now, as this video said, uh, it's best practice to have multiple authors do this, at least two, but for the purpose of this class, you know, you're gonna be working on your own, and that's, that's just fine. So, let's go ahead and start this process, and the best way to start this process is in Zotero, that's our reference manager, so let's bring it up. Now, the first thing that you should do in my view, is to organize your references in Zotero. So if you haven't already, I recommend that you create a folder called Records Screened. So if I go up here and I right click, I'm going to type or hit New Collection and I'm going to call it 
records screened. So that's right here. And now what I want to do is I want to create some other folders. So I'm going to go back up. I'm going to right click new collection. I'm going to call this one. Uh, let's see here. Records exclude it. And we're going to create another folder. And we're going to call this one full text articles assessed for eligibility. These names should sound familiar to you because we're pulling them from the Prisma diagram. Let's create another one. New collection. This one's called, let's move it over here, full text articles excluded with reason. Let's create another one. Studies included in qualitative synthesis. And let's make another folder. And we're going to call this one studies included in quantitative. Q in quantitative synthesis. The first thing that you want to do is go over to my library. And remember, in my case, I have 695 articles. Obviously, for you, it's probably going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to highlight all of these articles. And I'm going to take all of these articles and I'm going to drag them into records screened. So we click on records screened. This should start to build up. And we should find 695 articles in here in a second. There we go. Okay, so after you've dragged all of your records into the screen folder, then you want to actually start screening them. And so what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be reading the titles of all of these articles, or however many you have, all of the records, and for the ones that are clearly ineligible, you're going to drag them to the records excluded folder. So let's give you an example here. So the first one on my list is a four-week instructed minimalist running transition and gait retraining changes planter pressure and force. So that is clearly ineligible. If you wanted a little more details, you can read the abstract, but I can tell based upon that title alone that that's not what we're interested in. So I'll just go ahead and I'll drag it over here to records exclude it. And now what I do is I can go ahead and click on records excluded and I can see that this is now here. And I can go back to my records screened and then I can go on to the next one and read that one. So in this way you keep on going and then when you, whenever you find an article that seems to be appropriate then you would drag it over to the full text articles assessed for eligibility. And this represents all of the articles that you're going to track down in full copy because they look like they might be appropriate and you're going to want to read them in more detail to make the decision about whether to include them or not. And, and so later on we'll dig into that. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this. It's going to take a little bit of time, uh, but we're in it together. So let's go through all of it. Okay, so we just completed that process now. We've gone through all of our screened articles and you can see here we've screened out uh, 688 articles. Okay, and let's go up here to full text articles assessed for eligibility. These are the ones that I found that seemed appropriate and there's a total of uh, a total of seven. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to right click on the folder. This is full text articles assessed for eligibility and you want to click create bibliography from collection. And let's use APA 7th edition output uh, bibliography and let's do copy to clipboard. Okay and because it copied it to our clipboard we just need to go over to our assignment now bring it up. This is what we've been working through so far. 
and hit Control V. And so I'm just going to adjust the font here a bit. We're going to make it single. Your Calibri light, and let's just make it a little bit smaller. And so what we have here, uh, I, I ask you to list the references below uh, in your uh, in your assignment packet so that we have a reference to them. And now we want to go back up here and identify the number of records excluded. Well, for me, it was 688, and the number of full text articles that are eligible, it was seven. And so the next thing that I want you to do is go back over to Zotero and I want you to go to the records that are excluded. Uh, and we need to keep track of these. It's important that we are aware of them. So you can go ahead and right click, click Create Bibliography. And we're going to do APA 7th edition again. And we can again, um, we can do Copy to Clipboard. Click OK. So now they're in our clipboard. And I want you to create a separate document. I'm going to paste those. And so what we have here, these are our record of our excluded files. So this is there's 688 records here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Just call it excluded files and maybe associate it with your, uh, your, your particular project. And I, I'm just going to go ahead and save it on my, uh, on my desktop. And click save, and there we go. So this it's going to be an appendix in your uh, in your final report. So we can go back to Zotero. And here we go. Okay, so that's a fantastic bit of work there. Let's go back over to our PowerPoint presentation, and let's move on to the next thing. So that now we're on to step four: search for similar related articles. So now is a really great time to expand your search. So what you want to do here is you first want to go to the full text articles assess for eligibility folder in Zotero and open up each one of those in a browser. So let's show you what this looks like. Now if I double click on this, you can see that I'm taken to the uh, my sign in page for Salem State University. So I'm going to enter this. Now, if the article was retrieved in Medline, then that's where it will open up. If it was retrieved in Central, then that's where it'll open up. In most cases, I believe most of mine here were, were retrieved and saved in Medline. I deleted most of the Cochrane uh, duplicates. You just want to make sure that you're signed into whatever database that you're in. So here, I'm going to need to sign in again. And there I am. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up all those articles from Zotero. Okay, and let's go ahead and double check that they're all opened up. Okay, so this one was from Cochrane and the link opened up directly in uh, the actual journal. In this case, it was Sage Journals. And we're not able to do a very effective search in Sage Journals, so I'm going to go and click on this link right here. It says Find in PubMed. And I just want to go back and close this tab. And here what you want to do is automatically we're brought up to this page and it says Similar Articles right here. And so in this example, you just want to click on the bottom. It says, see all similar articles. So that's how you do the function in PubMed. You just want to make sure that there's no filters set over here. And you're not limiting it. So in this example, I'm seeing 57 similar articles. Just to be uh, thorough, I'm going to open up this. And this one's also in Medline. So what I have here is I have one, two, three, four, five six articles from Medline and then one article from PubMed. The one article from PubMed I clicked to expand and I found all the related articles here. You do this a little bit differently in Medline though, but it's pretty easy. All you need to do is just go and click on this left find similar results 
and then I'm taken here. And in, in this case, there's 558. Uh, now, why don't I just go through the process and do all of this right now? I'll find similar articles here, find similar articles here, find similar articles here, and here, and here. And then that brings us back to the PubMed one. So if you're doing a professional review, then you need to look through every one of these. 558 here, on this other article, 229. Here it's 438 similar articles. But for the purpose of this class, you really only need to look for the first 50 or, or 100 or so. So here again, what you're doing is you're scanning through the titles, uh, potentially looking at the abstracts, and you're applying that basic inclusion criteria. You're looking for articles that never made it into your initial search. And if you see something that looks relevant, then you can just add it to the saved folder if you're in Medline. And if you're in PubMed, you can just add it to your clipboard. Later on, you're going to take all of these files that you add, all of the potentially relevant other sources, and you're gonna add them to a new folder in Zotero. But um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go through this whole process, adding what looks to be relevant articles into my save folder, and then I'll uh, time-lapse that whole process, uh, and then I'll stop, and then we'll talk through what to do next with those articles if you found any. Okay, so in my search, I didn't find any additional articles in this similar related articles search, but maybe you did. And so what I wanna do is show you what you need to do now if that's the case. So what you would do is you would go back to Zotero and you would create a new folder. So right click, create a new collection. And I think you should call it articles found in related uh, articles search. That's pretty clear, we know what that is. And so what you would do then is you would go back and as we've imported references into the database before, into the Zotero, you would do the same thing again. They would be imported into my library uh, and you can see when they were brought in by just adjusting the dates or searching for the titles up here and then you would simply drag them in to your articles found in related uh, article search. Now after that uh, what you would do is you, know, you would go over to your assignment, let's bring up the assignment packet. Okay and so this is where we left off step four similar related article search and you would state the number of relevant articles that you found in the similar related article search. And you should also identify the location. So here you would say records found through related article search, uh, and then you would just type the number here. Now, ideally what you'll do is you'll say, um, you know, which article that they came from if you want to be super precise. Uh, but at the very least, this is how you want to keep track of it. And so let's say that you found three articles. So what you do is you'd bump your number up three here, and then you would go down your Prisma diagram, and under records identified through other sources, you would type down here, uh, records found, uh, let's see, in related articles search. And if you found three, you would type three there, okay? Now, similarly, uh, if you found other articles, you know, maybe looking through Google Scholar, you would write N equals whatever here. And so all of your sources of gray literature would be listed here as well. And again, um, there certainly are more articles that are related to this holographic wristband topic than you will find in those main databases that I mentioned. Uh, and so, you know, maybe if you, if you looked at research, research gate, uh, which is a great source, then you might find some more here. And so the next step here is, let's say you had three articles found in this related search, and then maybe you had some in Google Scholar, and then you had some in ResearchGate, whatever that may be for you, then you would go down here, 
uh, and you would add them to full text articles assessed for uh, eligibility. You would put those in here. In Zotero, you would also obviously drag those over to the correct, uh, the correct folder. So full text articles assessed for eligibility because you want to make sure that all of the articles that you're going to be assessing in the next step are all in really one place. So in this one place, you would have all the articles you found from your database search, you would have all the articles from all of the other sources. And so what we're going to do next uh, in, the, in the next step is, uh, is go on to, to try to pull these actual articles and get a hold of them. So let's head back over to the presentation here. So the next thing you want to talk about is how to retrieve full text copies of all of your remaining titles. And so what we want to do is we want to go back to Zotero. And so the folder that we're in is the full text articles assessed for eligibility. So in here, you should have all of the articles that you've retrieved so far from your database searches, from your uh, gray literature searches, from anywhere else that you might have looked, your similar article searches, they all should be here. And remember, you know, if you're, uh, if you're exploring this question, the um, influence of uh, holographic wristbands on physical performance, there's going to be more articles than what I'm showing you right here. I just want to give you a rough idea um, on, on how to walk through this process. There's still obviously more for you to do and you could be very, very thorough. Okay, so uh, the first thing that you need to do to get the full text versions of all these articles is you want to open up all of these articles uh, as we already have before. So here are all the different articles that we've uh, retrieved so far in this example. And so all you need to do is first off, see if the PDF is accessible here. So if we click uh, on this article, it doesn't look like there's a PDF accessible here. It doesn't look like there's one here, but it does here. So this is the article by Hansen, does a mineral wristband effect balance, a randomized control double blind study. And so all you need to do is you need to click to download it and then just save it somewhere on, on your computer. So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this on my desktop. I can go ahead and save that and then I can drag it over to my desktop. Uh, but actually while I'm here, the, the, the neat thing that you can do is once you have the PDF copy, you can actually attach it to Zotero. So let me show you how to do that in this case. So we bring up Zot Zotero and then here's the article that we're talking about, the Hansen article. What you can do is you can right click on it. Let's see here and we can click add attachment and then you can attach stored copy of file and I can click on this and I can search and you can see here is it's stored on my desktop and I can just double click on that open it up uh, and it will be saved here so the next time that you open this article you double click on it the PDF will automatically pop up so that's a pretty handy way to keep track of all of your uh, articles getting full text articles is easy right well, let's go back over and continue the process here. So now we know we have this version, um, but we still have a lot of other articles here uh, that might not have a PDF. This one has a PDF. This one doesn't. Uh, this one doesn't appear to be easily accessible. Uh, and this one doesn't have a PDF attached to it. So why don't we just, I'll walk you through an example on what you can do to try to track down the full text. And let's use this as, this one as an example. It's pretty new. Uh, we can see here it is 2020. Can a balance wristband influence postural control? It's by uh, Icorn. So let's go ahead and show you the first thing that you should do. First, I recommend copying the title, control C, and then go back over to your browser and then put PDF and then control V and then hit search. And then you could just simply start going through the links here. So this link is for PubMed. We can click on this and it gives us a link to the publisher's website. So if we were to click on this, it would open up again in a new tab. We'd be taken to directly the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. And it looks like it is not available for free. It's available for sale. Uh, you can access it through, through these different locations. Um, so let's just keep on exploring different options here. That's, we'll close those because they don't appear to be useful. Uh, here's another option. This website is called ResearchGate. 
And ResearchGate, it's kind of like a Facebook for geeks. Uh, you can sign up for free and oftentimes you can find uh, free PDF copies of articles here. In this case, it's not here. The authors didn't upload the free PDF copy. You can see you can request a PDF, but it's not here. So we need to try something else. Uh, other than this, I recommend you keep on going through all of these links to see if you can find the PDF copy, trying to track it down if you can. If you can't track down the PDF copy of your article with a Google search, and you should really aim to go a couple pages deep on this Google search, uh, then you should go to your library. So in this case, we'll go over to the Salem State University Library. We'll visit your site and you can click journal title. So that article is in the journal of strength and conditioning research. Let's see what comes up. Okay, let's have a look here. Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research Corner, that's not it. And here it is, this is the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. Let's click on it. And it asks me to sign in because I'm remote. Okay, and okay, there we are. And so we need to go back and we need to look for the specific journal details. So we know exactly where to look. So we know it's 2020, uh, but let's see if we can find the issue. So this is the one. We know it's volume 34, issue 12 in 2020. Okay, it doesn't look like this is putting us in the right place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to advanced search and let's search for journal title, Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, click search. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's right at the top. Okay, clicking Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. And here we are, and we can see access. So it shows us the access points. We can access it through this database, but it's only available 2005 to 2011. And actually, if we scroll down through all of these, they're pretty much only available from 2005 to 2011. So what that tells us is that we can't get this free article through our, our, our university library. But there is one other thing that uh, you can do. You need to uh, requ request this uh, item through interlibrary loan. So you can click here and you can fill your name, your information, and then the item details. So here you would say the article title uh, and you would type in the article title. Let's just make sure we're on the same page. So here it is, can a balance wrist band influence postural control? You're gonna need to input all the specific details associated with that journal. Uh, and then what'll happen is when you put that information in, uh, then the, uh, a librarian at Salem State University will get a hold of this and then they'll try to, to find this article for you. Now, the important thing to remember is if you're doing a professional review, then this interlibrary loan service, this will work if you can't find the article absolutely anywhere. You, you know, you could even try reaching out to the author if you can get the, their email, but if you can't, uh, for the purpose of this class, I don't want you to do an interlibrary loan. I want you to email me and tell me exactly which article you're looking for because I have every one of these articles. So uh, rather than go through the interlibrary loan process, then just, just reach out to me uh, specifically with your request and, uh, and I should be able to get you the, uh, the article, most of them that are relevant uh, anyway. So you have your marching orders. What you need to do is track down all of your articles using, using the methods that I've just referred to. First, see if the uh, record is available here in, in PDF. If it's not, second, Google it. If you can't get it there, check out ResearchGate, check out PubMed, uh, and then go to the library holdings, see if you can get it there. And then if you can't, then email me. But you have to prove that you went through those steps and I'll know 
uh, because I'm pretty well aware of which articles you can and which, which articles you can't get, you know, as long as we're uh, going through this particular uh, research question. And then the last thing that I want to mention is after you have all of these full text articles, then I recommend that you save them somewhere on your computer and then ideally attach them as PDFs in Zotero so you can have a nice, uh, a nice easy access point for them. I'm, I'm sure you're starting to appreciate that this might take some time for you. You might have to pause this whole process, stop the video and, and spend a little bit of time trying to get this article or waiting on me to get back to you. Normally, you know, I should be able to get back to you in a couple of days with, with your article. So what you need to do now is save your progress, save your files, and then just pick it up next time with step six. Uh, when you have all of your articles in full text. Okay, so let's head back over to that PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so if you're watching this, I'm going to assume that you have full text copies of all of your articles. Up to now, we've really only read just a few article titles and maybe a few abstracts, and you should have a few article titles that look good, but you really need to look at each one of those in more detail to really determine whether it matches your study inclusion criteria. And so what I want to do now is I want to give you an example of how this is done and then you'll carry on in the same way for all of your other art articles. And we're going to start by reviewing a study to see if it meets the inclusion criteria. It's going to be the Hansen et al. study, which is the PDF is freely available. That questions whether a mineral wristband affects balance. Now, let me just say, to judge whether this study really meets your inclusion criteria, you really only need to read the methods section, but I like to start with the abstract and then I move on to read the introduction and then the methods. Sometimes you can glean little bits of information from the abstract introduction. Now, one other thing I want to mention before we get started, to stay organized, I like to use a table. So I created a table that lists the studies that um, you're going to be looking at and it leaves space for you to check off whether the study meets your inclusion or exclusion criteria. Now, if you go over to the assignment packet, assignment number four, you, know, you see here we completed step number four. This is just a formality. You just need to identify the number of studies you found. But here, what I'm talking about is step five. And so here again, you're just stating the number of articles you're in possession of and any articles that you can't locate. But here's the table that I'm referring to. On, in this column, it is an option to put a check and that confirms whether your study is included or excluded. The study reference is written here. And then here's your PICOS criteria, participants, uh, inclusion criteria, comparisons, outcomes, and then the, the study design. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that these criteria match up with what your PICOS criteria are. If you're looking at the holographic wristband question, then the participants were interested in any adults, all adults. For the intervention and comparison, we're really interested in a silicone holographic wristband compared to a placebo or nothing at all. And for the outcomes, it's got to be balanced. That's our main outcome measure. But any measure of physical performance will do. Certainly any adverse effects we're interested in. And then it has to be measured when the wristband is worn. And then in terms of study design, we're interested in at least quasi-randomized control trials and certainly randomized control trials. And then here, if you find that the study needs to be excluded, then you can just type your reason for exclusion here. So let's go back to the paper that I want to take you through here. And in order to find it, then we're going to go over to Zotero. Now, uh, if, you, uh, if you've completed this uh, as I suggested, then you just click on the, the record and the PDF will, will pop up. So what you want to do now is, if you haven't already and you're interested in this research question, you should pause the video, you should read through the abstract, you should read through the introduction, and then you should read through the, uh, the methods section here of this paper, and then we'll have a conversation about you know, the, the ins and outs of this paper and whether it meets your inclusion criteria. So again, pause the video now so you can complete that little process. It shouldn't take too long if this is your research question. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've now read those first few sections of the paper and let's go back over to our assignment to see what the first criteria you want to look at is. Actually, we need to do a little bit of housekeeping first. So this study, it's called uh, Hansen, H-A-N-S-S-O-N, 2015. Now, the first thing we want to see is whether it has the right participants. 
So let's go back over to that paper. We're going to put a yes or a no uh, to determine whether it does or not. Okay, so let's go and find the methods section. So here we are in the methods section, subjects. This study group was 40 healthy volunteers aged 20 to 69 years. That's kind of old, um, but still, yeah, we don't specify the exact criteria for age cutoffs. Uh, and so it looks like there was a combination of males and females. So yes, it looks like the, uh, the subjects fall within our inclusion criteria. So we're going to go back over to our assignment. And we're going to put a capital Y there. So yes, we, it meets it. The next thing we want to look at is the uh, intervention and comparison. Does it utilize a silicone holographic wristband compared to a placebo band or nothing at all? So let's go ahead and bring up that PDF. Okay, so let's go through this here. Well, we can see from the procedures here that uh, they are using something called the Bionic Sport wristband, specifically the Bionic Sport from the Bionic family, and you can uh, explore it here, uh, perhaps at bionicband.com. Now, uh, is this what we're after? Well, the good news is we can see as we read this, it does seem to be compared to a placebo condition, so that's, that's good, so far so, so good. But I'm not really sure what a bionic sport band is. It says something about a mineral component, but it's not really clear to me if there's a hologram or if it features holographic technology. So we're gonna need to do a little bit of digging here. So I can see that if we go down here later on, I recall uh, later on here, if we go in the equipment section, down at the bottom it says the mineral wristband was made of silicone and according to the manufacturer it contains mineralized surgical steel uh, and has the highest frequency which therefore makes the greatest impact on balance and then it talks about the placebo here okay so now we know what it's made of but we're still not sure uh, whether it's relying on hologram technology okay so i think we need to do a little bit more exploring if we go back to the abstract up here First thing it says in the last sentence, it says RCTs have shown that wristbands with holograms have no effect on balance, but studies with wristbands with minerals seem to be lacking. So this seems to be drawing a distinction between what they're looking at, uh, the mineral wristband, and then uh, wristbands with holograms. Uh, and actually, if we go to the uh, introduction, this distinction is, is emphasized again. But it's still not clear to me. Sometimes researchers can make mistakes with equipment. So maybe what we should do is visit the website. So if I click on the link, we're taken here. Huh. Okay, and so it says hugedomains.com. This is a domain sale page. And so it appears that Bionic Bands doesn't exist anymore. You can see here it's being sold for a nice little profit, $6,395. That's fantastic for hugedomains.com. Um, but it suggests that the business probably doesn't exist uh, anymore. But there's one other thing that we can do because we ultimately want to get a look at this band to see if we can confirm uh, whether or not it has this holographic wristband component. So let's go over to Google and let's, let's Google it, see what comes up. So we'll just type in Bionic Sport wristband. You can see what comes up here. So eBay links, Amazon links. Bionic band. It doesn't seem like these are associated with the band at all, but you can explore these in more more detail. It looks like there's some resistant band structures here. Um, what if we go to images? Maybe we can get a look at it. Okay, I'm not seeing anything in particular. A lot of silicone type bands, but it doesn't seem like we're able to confirm uh, or or deny based upon specific information from the company where there's a hologram there. So let's go back over to our assignment. Now we have to use a little bit of reason here. Given the company seems to not exist anymore, it's hard to confirm the composition of the band. So I think it's reasonable to go with what we know, what was stated in the paper. It seems the mineral component is distinguished 
from the holographic component by the researchers in the paper. So I think we can go ahead and place a N in this intervention column. So here, it does not have the correct intervention. Now, the next thing that we wanna do, we, we, we do wanna be thorough here. We don't wanna just give up after we have our first N, although this does mean that we're going to exclude the study. We wanna continue on uh, and uh, identify whether it has the appropriate outcomes and study design. So, do we have the correct outcome measures? Well, let's go back over to the study. And so what we're seeing here, if we go to the procedures, uh, it talks about how balance is measured uh, on a force platform, specifically postural sway was assessed in a few different conditions. Uh, so that looks good, and it was compared um, to, to a placebo condition. So I think what we could do is we can go back over to the assignment, and if, if you wanna read more about that, then it's in here and then also in the equipment section right here. But let's go back over to our assignment. I think you'll agree with me that the appropriate uh, outcome measures are there. It doesn't measure all of them, but it certainly measures one of them. And based upon my reading, it seems like that, uh, that study design is at least a quasi-randomized control trial. So I would also say yes here. So what, what we need to do now is make a decision on this paper and, and I would say that this paper is not included, so we won't put this little check mark here. And for the re reason for exclusion, it will say the band doesn't have a hologram. And that's simple enough. And so then what you do is you just uh, go on to the next study. Now, just as an aside, as you're reading through a paper, you may, in this paper, you may disagree with my assessments. So it's good practice to decide in advance how disagreements with other authors will be handled. Now, for example, you may decide to do this by discussion until you reach consensus or by referring the final decision to say the main author. Having a discussion about say difficult decisions, it's good because it can identify gaps where your eligibility criteria are not clear or where different authors interpret the same criteria in different ways. And really at the end of the day, it's helpful to pilot this whole selection process on just a few papers to identify any issues. Now, although you should avoid making any changes to your criteria at this stage, once you're full on with the review, it may actually be necessary to make a change to address an issue not anticipated at the protocol stage. But if this happens, for transparency, you should describe any changes made in your review, and you need to be very careful about any changes affecting the scope of, of your review, especially if your search didn't systematically look for studies that meet your new criteria. And actually, just as an aside, I was just reviewing a systematic review uh, of the literature, and the researchers didn't find a few studies. And I brought this up in their review. I said, how come your search didn't find these studies? They went back to their inclusion criteria, this is in the final stages of the publication, and said, oh, we're changing the inclusion criteria. So now you see those studies that we missed, they're conveniently not gonna be included. And so that's a big no-no. Uh, and so that paper I recommended, it should be rejected. For this very reason, you don't wanna go back and mess with your inclusion exclusion criteria after you've seen the results. It introduces a lot of bias. So also, the other thing I wanted to mention, this table here, you're always gonna to wanna to include this table, particularly just the excluded studies. It's called the characteristics of excluded studies. Now, depending on the size of your search results, uh, this list of excluded studies might include all of the studies that you retrieved in full text, or it may include more limited studies, maybe those that readers might, you think, be interested in, they might expect to see in your included studies, but they weren't for some reason. So this really helps to ensure transparency of any decision that you make to exclude studies. Any reader, for example, who wonders about a particular study or disagrees with your decision can go and look at that study and see why you said it was excluded. And now for our purposes, this table with all of the included studies removed and just the excluded studies shown uh, in your final assignment is good. But just to be clear, for this assignment, I want you to list all of the studies all of the included studies and all of the excluded studies. Later on, much later on, when we get to the end of the semester and you're writing your final report, you'll essentially copy and paste this table uh, and put it in the appendix. 
delete all of the included studies and just relabel the table list of excluded studies and reasons for exclusion, just to be clear. Okay, so before you move on to step seven, the final step in this whole process for this video lecture, you should pause the video now and read all of your articles. Remember, just the abstracts and introductions and methods and carefully consider whether they meet your study inclusion criteria using this table in assignment number four. And after you've completed that, then you can go on to the final step. So I'm gonna assume that you've done all of that work, you've read all of your articles, you've come up with the final list of included and excluded studies. And after you've done that, this final step, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is just list the included articles and update your PRISMA diagram. Of course, you may include some additional studies later on. For example, you know, in a professional review when you update this, um, you know, before you send it for publication, but at present, just go with what you have and get ready to start pulling data from these papers. And that's what we're gonna be doing in, in one of the next lectures. Before I do that though, I just wanna review this PRISMA diagram uh, and we're gonna do it from the perspective again from this holographic wristband study. So let's go over to our assignments here. Okay, so this is where we left off. You've gone through and you've categorized all of your studies kind of like I have done here. And the last step that we're on Step seven is updating your PRISMA diagram. And so you've gone through the records identified, that number should be there. Uh, you, you're gonna have different numbers here, records identified through different sources than I'm gonna have. You've searched the gray literature and you've probably found some here, I hope you have. Uh, you've removed duplicates. Uh, in this case, we moved from 1,022 down to 326. Uh, let's see here, retracted articles, there was one removed as well. And then we screened through title and abstract 695. And of those, we removed 688 that were clearly ineligible. And then we retrieved seven full text articles. We read through them and then excluded, in my case, I excluded one. Um, and then the studies included for the, qual the qualitative synthesis is six. So that's the next step is we're gonna go through and pull data to see how relevant uh, th those data are. So let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation. That really brings us to the end. So I just wanna recap this final assignment for you so we're on the same page. You know, you should have everything here done in assignment number four and it should be good to go. Uh, but let's just go back here and, and recap. So this is assignment number four. You started off, you can see the assignment instructions here. You gathered all unique records. You should have a number here. Uh, you remove duplicates. Again, you should have those precise numbers here. All these are the same as your PRISMA diagram. Number of excluded records here, number of full text eligible articles. And then you have the actual references here. I've tidied these up, so it might look a little bit different than yours, but this is an APA. Uh, and then search for similar related articles. I have zero here, but you may have a number here if you found similar related articles. And then you've re retrieved the full text. So in my case, it would have been seven the number of full text reports you cannot locate. I got them all for, for me. I've gone through and I've applied inclusion criteria. You see I have the checks. The checks is just copy and paste it from here. If you didn't know, control C and then you can just control V it down here. And the next step is just updating your PRISMA diagram as I suggested. And you can see your rubric. This is how you're gonna be assessed on each of those uh, sections. Mastery, proficiency, developing, beginning, understanding, all the way down to zero if you plagiarize or you didn't provide an answer uh, at all. Let's go back over to that deck. Here's the source material. You might find some of this handy. Uh, this, you know, especially if you're doing a professional review, there's a lot of useful stuff here. But otherwise, that is it. I hope that you have found this lecture slash workshop pretty useful and you learned a lot about the whole process. So let's leave it there for now and then let's get ready to pick it up next time when we're going to dig into pulling data from each of those studies.